to continue with our media availabilities this morning with Joey Logano, driver of the number 22 Shell Pennzoil Ford. For Team Penske, if you have a question for Joey, go ahead and raise your hand, and we'll get to as many questions as we can. And who would like to kick us off? All right, we'll go to Greg. I'm always back, Johnny. <laughs> Someone's got to be. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Hello, Joey. Greg from Forbes. When does the playoff, um, your, your, your kind of playoff attitude kick in? Is it when you get here at the first race, when you roll in the track, or is it like Daytona in February? Uh, uh, in February, um, yeah, I mean, I think there's a there's a balance in there somewhere. Um, I'd say really the last like three or four weeks before the playoffs start is when I feel like you got to start putting everything together. Um, yeah, you know, before that, you know, you're don't get me wrong, you're out there trying to win, you're trying to get every point because every point is really going to matter all season long. But there's a uh, it seems like there is a point with three or four weeks to go before the playoffs where. It, the intensity ratchets up a little bit, and you are more and more concerned about any weakness that could be shown on your race team. Um, and so you, you, I think you kind of start getting that way a little sooner um, than Daytona. Um, but you know, you, you kind of got to find a, I always say a fifth gear. Uh, now we have five gears in our car, so you got to find a sixth gear now. <laughs> And and you got to keep you know looking for that little bit. I find that one percent. Well, where is it? What's the difference? And, and those little things when it comes to playoff times and sports. Coming to a town like this, I was I'm always struck by the fact that this is so old school. Not just here, but the town and the history of this place. Do, you know, what do you feel like when when you, you're driving into Darlington and and you see that you know see all the old school stuff that goes on here? I love it, uh, and it really fits the racetrack itself, right? I mean, this is. The most challenging racetrack we go to, hands down. Everyone would probably agree with that. As a driver, qualifying like these Xfinity guys are right now, I mean, it's it's intense <laughs> all the way around here. And then you put 500 miles in the heat and uh, add a little extra pressure with, with what they call the playoffs <laughs> on top of that. I mean, it's it's a tough weekend for sure. Um, but that's what makes it so special, right? When you when you are able to achieve something that was a big challenge for everybody, it means more. Um, right, and then I feel like when you come to Darlington, that's why every driver wants to say they won the Southern 500, because it's hard, right? The history and all that is special too, right? You want to have your name on that list with with all that, but to me, it's deeper than just the history. It's it's the fact that it's just really hard, and and that's that's what you know means so much about this race. Thank you, sir. Yep. All right, we're gonna go to Mike Hembry, Steve Post, and then we'll come up to Hunter. Go ahead, Mike. Mike Hembry, NBC. You could wind up racing a, a Penske guy for the championship, but at this point, is, is there any special comfort in having so many Penske teams involved? Um, it's nice to, to accomplish that, right? We have all, all three of our cars in there. That's, that's a special thing. Um, you know, does it change much? Not really. Um, you know, it doesn't change uh, for us as a 22 car um, that much, right? It's nice to have more chances at a championship for Team Penske, but, uh, you know, from a global view, but when you kind of zoom in to what I have to do behind the wheel or what my direct team has to do, uh, pick career, those type things to, to make sure that we're in the championship four when we get to Phoenix, I don't think it changes much depending on how many cars your team has in at that moment. Joey Steve Post, Motor Racing Network. One of the hallmarks of this season or themes has been inconsistency. Uh, you guys have found some here recently, probably the nine car has, but does this halter, what, what's, your, what's your thought on the, the playoffs and the overall inconsistency of everybody? I mean, we could have non-playoff guys and other guys winning in the round of eight. What's your sense as to what we might see and if, if, if it is different than what we've had in the past? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, this is the most um, close playoff battle we've had to, to coming into the playoffs, right? When you look at just where everybody is with points uh, coming in, right? Everyone's got wins. Usually, you know, there's drivers that come in with zero playoff points. You know, now you got some with wins, stage wins, some regular season points uh, that, that switched over. You know, it's a year, it's pretty close when you, th and you look at the, the way it's all seated. Like, I don't think we've ever had it this close before. And that's because of the inconsistency, right? We finished second in regular season points and I'm not sure we had a second place season in other years just shows how inconsistent everybody's been 
Um, and it's not a surprise, right? We kind of knew this would happen in the beginning of the year. When you have a brand new car, the cycles happen quicker. Whereas, you know, typically before a team will figure it out and know they got two and a half, three months of kicking butt before the next cycle comes. Now it's like three weeks before the next team is, is the dominant team, right? We've seen the cycle happen four, five times already this year. Um, so you just got to hope you cycle to the front when it matters the most. Joey Hunter Thomas with the fourth turn.com. These new next gen cars seem to be really more durable and tougher. Does that kind of change the way you approach this race with the pressure on the line with the playoffs? Do you have more room to maybe get a little closer to the wall, maybe hit it a little bit in the final laps? Yeah, it depends on what parts of the car you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, it, there's some things that are definitely more durable for sure. Uh, there's some that some things that may not be, but the body, obviously, you know, being that composite body. It seems to bounce back pretty good if you just pancake the side of it. Um, you know, it's a little a brush here and there, not the end of the world. Um, you know, the right side of the car is not sticking way out in the wind like it used to. And when you push that back, it's not hurting you as much as it used to. Um, you know, but if that being said, you, you, there's a limitation to it. <laughs> um, but I'd say we've seen more aggressive racing this year because the cars are more durable for sure. Yep. All right, we're going to go. Dave, Jordan, and then Dustin. Go ahead, Dave. Dave Moody, MRN and Sirius XM. In terms of the evolution of this race car, Joey, how different is the piece that you have here this weekend compared to the spring, and, and how different is your approach to the way to drive these things than it was a few months ago? Uh, we changed some things for sure. We changed things to our cars. Uh, we have to, right? And we have to – what worked here in the spring is probably not going to work in the fall, and, and there's a lot of other things that have changed – um, on the car itself, but also the weather's different and, you know, your competitors are always trying to find a little bit more. Um, so yeah, we, we've changed a fair amount to our car. Hopefully it's all better. We, we think they are, <laughs> we convinced ourselves they are, <laughs> but, uh, time will tell here in a second when we get out there. All right. Jordan. Jordan Bianchi, the athletic, um, are you a little more apt to be conservative in how you race this round compared to other rounds because there's a little bit more of a gap between yourself and the drivers below the cut line, or does it not even matter in your mind? I try not to be conservative because I think that's when you kind of get in trouble a lot of times. Um, now, smart, I try to be smart about the, the risks that I take, um, you know, because this first round, I mean, you, you got to be 12th, right, at the end of it. And... Uh, you know, it's, it's still a challenge, don't get me wrong, but it's easier than being eighth or fourth, right, as these, as these rounds go on. So um, you can afford to be a little smarter and, you know, get through these races because, I mean, really the first three are just about not screwing up, right? It's been like that for years. Just don't, don't screw it up, and you usually can run good enough if you're in the top ten to, to get through. And so that's kind of the... The main goal. If you can win, though, you got to take those playoff points because that helps you all all year long, the rest of the way. Um, the other thing I was wondering about d distractions in the playoffs. Do you minimize extracurricular activities, uh, contact with friends, family, that kind of thing, or is it just mm -hmm. you know, all racing all the time, or is it just business as usual? Same stuff. I I, I don't change much. Um, I, I mean, I'm wide open every day from the moment I wake up to the second I go to sleep. So uh, it, that that part doesn't change. Cause that's just how I am. Uh, if you give me too much time to think about things, it's probably not a good thing. I'll, I'll overthink my way right out of this room. So uh, it's, it's important for me to stay busy and continue my routine. I'm a routine person. I do things the same all the time. Uh, and being busy is one big piece of that. And so I don't change it, right? When we were racing the championship four, you know, I, I always do my appearances on Sunday morning like I typically do. I, I don't take those away. Um, those, those things continue for me. All right, Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. You mentioned the inconsistency this year because of the new car and, and saying not having a second place type of uh, type of season. I'm curious, because of this inconsistency, because this year has been different, how has that challenged you in how you view things and how patient or reactive you are and, and how might that help or hinder you in these playoffs? Um, I, I feel like I've been through uh, up and down seasons plenty uh, and it's all about winning the most important ones um, there's been times that I felt like we 
should win the championship. We have the most wins on the season. We're, we're in great shape, and we've been consistent, scored a ton of points, and we don't make it to championship four. And then I look at our championship year, and it was an average year until we won two of the most important races of the year, and next thing you know, we won the championship. So it, it's you, you got to just kind of keep moving forward, right? And, and something bad happens, you say, okay, learn from it, and move on, forget about it. You know, after you get your learn, after you dissect it and learn from your mistakes, you just got to keep going. You got to keep out the windshield. Um, and this year is probably more so like that than ever because there is more ups and downs than ever. Um, but, hey, you got to ride the waves. I ride the waves like crazy. And some people say they don't, but I, I ride the ups and the downs a, a fair amount. And, um, and like I said, you learn from them, and you just keep going out the windshield. All right, Noah. And then we'll go to Lee. No, Lewis, TSJ Sports. Uh, obviously, this week the uh, USA show uh, premiered, and, and episode one was focused around you and your family uh, as one of the drivers. Um, you know, what's, what's your reaction been like from that? And then also, everyone's dying to know about uh, when the contact, my hot ass wife, was, was made. <laughs> <laughs> the day we got married. <laughs> uh, or probably fairly soon after. It's been, her, my contact for my wife has been my hot ass wife for like, the last seven or eight years we've been married and uh yeah that's just what it is and it's funny now because you know i use siri to call her and i say you know call my hot ass and then my kids in the back you call him mommy (laughs) it's pretty funny um so i know i feel like somewhere in there that should be changed i don't know i like it though and 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 now it's kind of funny now we now we just we're playing off it i didn't think twice about it being on my screen while they were shooting um which just goes to show how real everything is. Like they really did a good job at um, it taking, you know, what life is, right? Like what what is our life as far as you know how we prepare for races from you know a work standpoint, but also at home. And uh, I, they didn't really edit much out of it, right? I think it was it was pretty good and and entertaining, right? It was when I watched it, not just my stuff, but other competitors and seeing how they live and all that it's kind of cool to see I, I liked it i enjoyed it um i'm not sure i want cameras around me 24 7 all the time but it was uh you know we didn't change the way we live i mean, you know how it is with, with kids they're just going to say what they want to say no matter if there's a camera around or not um right and, and and things happen no matter what they're still kids so uh it, it really showed our life in a, in a in a real way and an authentic way and um, I think that's what the fans wanted to see. And, and what they're going to see is that we're all normal people, right? Like, it doesn't – I'm no different than anybody else. I just have a cool job that people watch on TV. It's, but life is still the same. You had three wins at Kansas, but I'm curious, how did the car, the new car, change how you approach that track? Um, I'm not sure it's – I mean, it definitely changes the way you race there um, like it has everywhere else, though, like it has at Vegas, like it has here, um, you know, mainly, you know, restarts and stuff and which lanes are stronger and, and, and how that, you know, happens and what lanes you want to choose for those reasons. Like all those things are different this year than what it was the last few years with the old car. Um, that part's different. Um, you know, how you work dirty year in general just after restarts and stuff, that's, that's different. But that's been that way since, you know, we started going to mile and a half and figuring that stuff out. So um, nothing really crazy outside the box besides the stuff that's just different about the car everywhere. And also, how's your confidence knowing you've won it every, at all at nine of the ten tracks in the playoffs? I guess I never really thought of that. Um, cool. That's good. That helps. <laughs> Thanks for the confidence. <laughs> I, I'm sure that helps. Uh, it's nice to know that you can win at, at really any track that, that comes your way. Um, you know, and, and, you know, even the, I guess the Roval is the one I haven't won at. And, and that really hasn't been that bad of a track for me either. So, um, you know, like I said on, on Media Day the other day, our team's really firing on all eight right now. We're um, in, in as good a shape as, as we've ever been as a team um, executing races. And uh, like I said, if we just find a little bit more speed, there's going to be a lot of wind stacking up if we keep doing what we're doing the last six weeks. So um, I feel great about it. You know, we, even if we don't have more speed in our cars, what we've done the last six races is good enough to get the championship four. So we just got to continue doing that. Yep. Thanks. All right. Any final questions for Joey? 
All right. Thank you. All right. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you.